Samsung USA has published the pre-order prices for its 2021 Neo QLED TVs with mini-LED backlighting. And the 4K flagship QN90A is on the whole cheaper than last year's Q90T, despite a massive upgrade in specifications. Let's talk about this. Hello everyone, Vincent Teo from HDTV Test here. The new QN90A or QN95A with one connect box appears to be a massive upgrade in terms of specifications compared with last year's 4K flagship Q90T. The reason we know this is because a German magazine Computer Bill has published the world's first review of the Samsung QN95A in the 65-inch version. And in the review, they specifically stated that the 65-inch QN95A will have 792 independently dimmable zones. This is a massive increase in the number of zones over last year's Q90T, which only had 120 zones. And I see some other channels continuing to say that the Q90T only had 96 zones, and that is incorrect. According to our zone count test pattern, it had 120 zones. But for 2021, the new 4K flagship, which is the QN95A or QN90A, the difference between the QN95A and the QN90A is that the QN95A will have the one connect box, whereas the QN90A won't. And I believe that the QN95A will only be sold in Europe, whereas for the US region, the 4K flagship is the QN90A without the one connect box. But I believe that the high number of local dimming zones of 792 will also be transferred across to the USA at least on the 65 inch model. Now, how is this possible? It is all possible because of the mini LED backlighting. And remember that Samsung doesn't really want to use the term mini LED to describe the technology inside the Neo QLEDs because, you know, Another company, TCL, has been responsible for pushing mini-LED technology, for pioneering mini-LED TVs. So the world's first large screen mini-LED TV was the TCL 8 series about two years ago, and Samsung didn't really want to be seen to be following in other people's footsteps. So they decided to coin the marketing term Neo QLED to describe these newer TVs with mini-LED backlighting. But at the core of it, it is still using mini-LED backlight technology. And what mini-LED backlighting allows manufacturers to do is to shrink the size of the mini-LEDs that can be put into the screen. And you can actually cram more of these mini-LEDs into the same screen size compared with conventional LEDs. And therefore, this allows for better segmentation of the local dimming zones. And with more local dimming zones, you get better light control and you get greater contrast because one area of the screen can be lit up, whereas the other parts of the screen can be kept dark and you can also reduce the amount of hallowing or blooming artifacts the higher the number of local dimming zones that you can actually implement on a screen. So it is extremely exciting news that the Samsung QN95A and also hopefully the QN90A at least on the 65 inch model will have 792 local dimming zones which is a massive increase over the 120 zones found on last year's 4K flagship the Q90T, and I can't wait to see how Samsung is going to use this increase in hardware configuration to boost the contrast and to allow for better light control while at the same time suppressing blooming and hallowing artifacts. And the other main upgrade over last year's Q90T is in terms of HDMI 2.1 support. According to Computer Bill, the one connect box on the Samsung QN95A will have four HDMI 2.1 ports capable of 4K and 120Hz. Now, we do not have any information whatsoever whether these will be the full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports of 48 gigabits per second or they will only be 40 gigabits per second. But regardless, even the Xbox Series X is only capable of sending 4K and 120Hz at 10-bit 444 because the chipset on the Xbox Series X 
is only 40 gigabits per second anyway. So I think even if these four HDMI 2.1 ports on the Samsung QN95A is 40 gigabits per second rather than the full 48 gigabits per second, I think there is no big loss because even now the Sony PS5 is only sending out a maximum HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 32 gigabits per second anyway. So if you send 4K 120Hz out from the Sony PS5, then you will be limited to 4K 120Hz at 12-bit 422. So you don't really need 12-bit 444 that only 48 gigabits per second can support. Now, you may think that with all these upgrades, like mini LED backlighting, like more local dimming zones, that the price of the new Neo QLED televisions will be significantly more expensive than last year's models, but that is certainly not the case when we look at the pre-order prices. So if you look on this page here, you can see that the QN90A will be available in 55-inch, 65-inch, 75-inch, and a massive 85-inch screen size. And the 55-inch model will cost $1,800. The 65-inch will cost $2,600. The 75-inch will be $3,500, whereas the massive 85 inch will cost you five grand. This is all in US dollars, of course. And if we look at last year's Q90T, the launch price, I think it is only fair if we compare the launch price rather than the price currently, because as you may or may not be aware, with consumer electronics, the prices generally drop over time as they approach the end of life. So I think it is only fair to compare the launch prices for these televisions and hopefully by Black Friday time then the prices would be similar. So I don't think it is fair at all to compare the launch price of a brand new television compared with let's say the Q90T which may be much cheaper now but that is because it is already approaching the end of life. It is about to be discontinued. I don't think it is fair at all. So I think it is only fair if we compare the launch price to last year's launch price. And if you look at the prices that Samsung has kindly put on the website but crossed out, then you can see that the previous launch prices for the Q90T last year were the same at $1,800 for the 55-inch version, but it is more expensive for the 65-inch model, which is around $2,700. And for the 75-inch and also the 85-inch Q90T, they are actually $300 more expensive than the 75 inch and also 85 inch QN90A at launch. So I think, you know, this is extremely good for consumers like you who may be considering buying a Samsung TV because you are definitely getting an upgrade in specifications and hopefully improvement in picture quality, but you're actually not paying more, you're actually paying less generally on the whole and i think that this is extremely good news not only for consumers who want to buy samsung tvs but also you know it may be good generally to drive down the prices of competing technologies such as oled so maybe lg and maybe sony they will be thinking twice before actually pricing their oled tvs and on the mini led front i think you know the main competition for Samsung will come from TCL, who pioneered mini LED televisions, and also Philips and LG, who have joined the mini LED bandwagon. Now, I keep reading some rumors about Samsung using TCL mini LED panels in their Neo QLED television, so you might as well save some money and just buy a TCL mini LED TV. And you know, I really want to dispel these rumors because as far as I understand, Samsung actually make their own mini LED backlighting in terms of their new QLED televisions. And if you refer to this article from Korean publication etnews.com, you can see that Samsung built a production line in Vietnam to produce mini LED televisions in anticipation for the demand this year. So overall, I'm very excited about Samsung's new 2021 new QLED televisions with mini LED backlighting, particularly the 4K flagship QN90A or QN95A with 
you know, 792 local dimming zones, a massive increase, the highest number of local dimming zones that Samsung has ever implemented on their consumer LED LCD television. And I look forward to receiving a review sample and putting it through its paces. If you'd like to watch more videos on next-gen display technologies, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.